So who has tried VR? So uh, web VR. And what about web VR? Um, and for them uh, are hours. Yeah, Let's see if we are successful and we can set up a headset out there and people can try. But we're going to talk about WebVR. Uh, WebVR is uh, an API that is actually pretty simple. It's very low level uh, API that just gives you access to VR hardware. So give you access to the input, so to the sensors that the VR headsets have, and it gives you um, an input API, so you can push pixels into, into the display of the headset. Um, yeah, and the idea is that they, they, uh, the output has to be efficient, like low latency, high frame rate, and it has to work with the, with the refresh rate of the VR headset displays, which is 90 FPS, and it's going to be 120, and eventually it's going to be uh, higher than that. So, correct. Yep. Um, this presentation is kind of a call for participation, actually. So we are going to uh, go through the current specification right now, but the main topic will be the open, open web VR challenge. We are still facing the open problems. And after this session, there will be a discussion. I, I don't know where yet, but um, it will be somewhere here. <laughs> And we can talk. Uh, we can talk later about what we are going to to, to show now. Um, WebVR, the the, the shipped version of the specification, is WebVR 1.1. Also, it say in the in the aspect side that is deprecated. It is what browsers are shipping right now. It is a um, moderately easy API. Uh, you need to. This is the, the main setup or the main steps for the for the setup. Um, you have an interface to eliminate VR displays. Then, um, when you are when you are uh, eliminating, you you can configure a layer. A layer affects uh, sources, graphical sources, and you can you can pass a WebGL context as source. Um, then request uh, for the same reason Diego was talking about about um, this high high frame rate uh, render loop, and you relay on on a different request animation frame from the main loop. It is not the the same where um, where you are presenting the the content. It's a separated one and tied to the VR display. Yeah, it's gonna fire to the refresh rate of the. Uh, of the this like yeah okay. yeah um, for each frame you require the frame info um, the, re the the frame info includes the left and right um, <laughs> projection matrix yeah. addresses so the, the idea in VR is that you you have your canvas and you have to render the left and right eye and um, yeah you need certain information that is particular to each headset to to render both eyes and there's a way to query for that information. Yeah, um, and then the headset has or implement uh, an API which is called Pose, and the Pose gives you uh, <coughs> your position in the space. So you can um, you can also compute the the the, the model view message, and then draw the steam once per. This is the yeah. basic setup. Yeah, there's an API to push the pixels, uh, mm -hmm. submit the frames to to the headset. Yeah. There's now another uh, specification ongoing. Um, yeah, we're, gonna, we're gonna get more context. So right now there's two specs. Is the 1.1 that he was saying is, is deprecated, and the 2.0 that is under development. So <laughs> this is kind of paradoxical, and so, we are working on well um, softening this deprecated language because yeah. it doesn't make sense if you if you refer to this part in. On GitHub, you will see that what is being implemented is actually 1.1. It is deprecated. It is also true, but it is what it is. Yeah. It is what we need to shift now because 2.0 is so unstable that it will change. Sure. Yeah. It will take a while to finish up like 2.0, and we decided to go with 1.0, which is already functional, in order for the web not to 
be too late into the VR game. So. Yeah, and actually the policies you, you will find out there right now are based on 1.1. Um, 2.0 is um, you can you can go to the specification document, but I think it's better if you if you uh, take a look at the explainer because a lot of the bugs, proposal, modification, end in that explainer and not in the specification document. Um, main difference with 1.1 is that it's more. Um, Isolated, it's each part is more, um, I don't know how to say, specific, and uh, it's more configurable. Um, for instance, it, it includes this feature support test, so when you are requesting a VR session with the special capabilities, you can ask the device if, if the device supports the kind of capabilities you want for your session. Um, it also um, introduced this. VR present new new context for the canvas in order to create or in order to perform mirroring of the of the VR content in a uh, efficient way. Um, and the magic window. Uh, do you know what magic window is? It's VR only your phone. Yes, uh, it's, it's based on fake head tracking. Is inferring your your head position. From the movements you do with the with the device, this is the magic window effect. Yeah, it's what a, if you try AR Kid or AR Core is just what magic window means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now with uh, the second specification, we have multiple frame of references. Uh, you remember when I was telling about uh, the the view and post models? <laughs> and now we have different kinds of. Uh, Frame of references. So the head model doesn't include the position. It's just it's just uh, three three degrees of freedom, I think. Eye level is the sixth degrees of freedom, and the stage also includes the boundaries, the stage boundaries. So you can you can ask, and this is a polygon. It's not limited only to to a square. Um, yeah. Square bounds. Yeah, the stage. Do you have use a headset when you set up a headset? Usually, what is considered room scale that you can have a space where you can walk around. Mm -hmm. When you set up and calibrate your headset, you define the area that you can walk around. And uh, and you, as an application, you want to know the, the space available for the user, and there's a way to query and know that information from the API. Mm -hmm. um, it is important also to, to know where the floor is in order for you to align the virtual space with the real space. And the specification provides a, a, an emulation for a state, which is also the file inside. Um, and well, another improvement is the multi view support, which allows you to use uh, web gear multi, multi view and extension. Uh, but we will talk about this later in one of the open web, uh, web VR challenges. And for, as a curiosity, it drops the reset post. I don't know if you have tried. Any experience, but from time to time, calibration is lost, and you need to reset your position. So you keep press a button to 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 ask the VR device to reset the orientation. Um, in the in the one by one specification, you can force it, and now you can only <coughs> oh sorry, and now you can only be aware of that happening. But you cannot uh, you cannot force it. So, can you summarize what the state of yeah. what we are in the different uh, browsers, please? So, the, the 2.0 spec is not finalized, so there's no browser engine that implements it yet. And what we are 1.1 has shipped on Firefox 55 on Windows for HTC and Vive headsets. And it's going to be shipping on, on Mac and Linux pretty soon. 1.1 uh, also ships on the Samsung internet browser and on the Oculus uh, browser for Gear VR. And uh, Microsoft is also shipping 1.1 on Microsoft Edge. And uh, for Chrome, um, it's available on, on Daydream, but it's under the Origin Trials program. 
So like uh, content creators, they have to opt into, into, into the API to be enabled for users. And um, for desktop, there's only uh, uh, experimental builds. So there's no commitment yet for Chrome to ship uh, web VR on desktop. They are focusing on dating, which is their platform. Um, so yeah, web VR 1.1, even if it's deprecated, is, is what we have right now, and is what it's shipping in, in different browsers. Uh, 2.0 is still under, under development. Well, um, these are the, the open channels we, we have gathered, and, and we are going to talk about first is VR navigation, then trusted UIs down to text tools, and I think I can show you a demo of that. And what's going on on the, on the augmented reality scene, and then some, some tool, um, what are the trends, regarding rendering pipeline optimization like this multi-view I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so VR navigation. So if you have tried web VR right now is, uh, what, so what is the web without having links or uh, being able to navigate from base to base seamlessly? It's, it's one of the fundamental ingredients of the web and, and today uh, in web VR is not possible, or in the browsers that it is possible, it's not ideal. So right now, uh, most of the browsers, they implement... Uh I have power here. Yeah, it's, it's good. Oh, okay. talking about VR navigation. Um, so the way the API works today is that it needs a user requirement, so a page cannot directly enter VR uh, without user um, uh, uh, gesture. So the same as the full screen API, for instance. Um, there's some, the WebVR 1.0 spec has a mechanism to be able to let a website to enter VR after the first uh, user gesture that triggers VR mode. So it means like, the first time the user has to click on, on the screen to enter VR, but subsequent kind of page navigations, those pages will be able to enter VR automatically without requiring a new user gesture. Um, and for that, there's a special event which is called VR Display Activate, that if you listen for that event in the, in the callback, uh, this user gesture requirement uh, doesn't apply. So uh, a page can actually request uh, VR mode and it will enter automatically. So this is to allow, allow at, at, after first um, uh, user gesture, then you can navigate from page to page without um, having to do any extra uh, or request the user for, uh, for approval. Um, this comes with uh, challenges too. So Firefox is the only browser that implements uh, this, uh, this event today. Uh, because there's privacy and security concerns, uh, because when you navigate between pages, uh, you have no Chrome. So there's no way for the user to know where you are, what's the URL you're loading. You are like doing cross-domain navigation, or if you go to your bank page, is it your bank page? Is someone else like spoofing the, the, the web? So um, we ship it on, on Firefox as a way to experiment how navigation might work. But it comes with uh, uh, with a lot of challenges. It's like uh, since we have no Chrome, how do you inform the user about like URL, like errors, like 404s? How do you use 404s? If a page is requesting uh, like geolocation API, how do you show permissions? That yeah, the, because the user has yeah. hold the moment yeah. because it's, it's the next slide. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, now is there's an, another problem that. Is that in the middle where, while you are navigating, you don't have uh, you don't have anything to render. Yeah. So uh, it's not only a matter of how to inform your users. Is that now the experience is suboptimal because you um, your experience frozen for the while you are loading 
the next scene. Not only the navigation times, but also how, how fast is the new page loading new content. So now, even if you try, um, if, if it is possible, we, we could uh, show the, yeah. the, the experiment in the, in the headset, you will notice that there is a freeze in the middle of the experience. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, a page is submitting frames to the headset and when you leave a page there's nothing in between to fill the gap and you don't know if the page is... And that, actually that means that your camera is frozen so you start to disassociate your real position from the virtual position and this provokes uh, headaches, you know, this uh, motion sickness. Yeah. Well, this is what uh, Diego was talking about, yeah. this concept of line of death and now we, we know uh, that the pixels above line of death are controlled by the Chrome, but yes. this is not the case in a VR experience, yes. where all the experience is in full control of everything that is in your screen. Yeah, yeah. You know, we don't have the equivalent. We have to think about the VR equivalent of this yes. in VR. And this is the main reason why uh, browsers are not implementing the uh, VR, in VR navigation. Yeah. Why is it important to be able to navigate without, between domains without kind of falling out of VR in the first place? What's the use case? Because it's, it's the whole point of uh, yeah. of the a web browser, right? Uh, being able like to navigate between pages seamlessly and link pieces of content with one another. Yeah, but you can listen to pieces of music. That's kind of uh, you have this between pages. You can stay full screen between pages, etc., etc. So. I can't, I can't, I, I, I don't understand your question. See, if each time that you want to navigate to a different page, you have to take your headset off, yeah. click, enter VR again, put it on. Yeah, yeah and it's, just like, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not an ideal experience. Yeah. No? Yeah. You don't like it very... I, I, I just, I'm on a page, I'm playing a game, I'm done, I take it off. Oh, I don't understand. Yeah, yeah but I, the, the, you, you want to uh, consume the whole web eventually yes. in a headset. Uh, perhaps, however, it's not the uh, now is not the best time to think about this because you know the headsets are heavy and they are not very comfortable and you need to carry the wires all the place around. But in the future, when when hardware evolves, um, the ideal experience that you don't have you don't have to switch you should not have to switch <laughs> between the traditional um, web and the virtual reality web, yeah. you, keep, you keep yourself in only one experience, which ideally, or the ideal for virtual reality, is the virtual reality experience. Yeah. So ultimately, those rectangles are going to disappear, right? It's not going to be displays. You're going to wear like a pair of glasses, mm -hmm. and you will consume all the digital content in your headset. So we have to think about those scenarios, where uh, the digital content has no boundaries, but it's all around you. <clears throat> well, um, this is done. The texture is related with uh, with uh, what we were talking about about converting the traditional to the um, um, web into an immersive experience. And one of the problems we have right now is that we don't have an efficient way to translate what we already have in the web. Yeah, we want to keep like doing the uh, two D UIs in VR. Uh, and we cannot render DOM elements. Uh, there's a couple of hacks, but there's not like a proper way to render the 2D web in a WebGL context. And, uh, and in, 2D, in WebGL, you can always overlay over WebGL uh, HTML DOM elements, but when you are in VR mode, the only thing you have is a WebGL context, so there's no way to present the traditional web in VR today. Yeah. But, um, this guy, um, Enyao Mo from Google, presented a prototype we are going to, to show you right now at uh, this year's SIGGRAPH. And I think you, you were there, you can explain better. Yeah, so um, this, this is like a first proposal, preliminary proposal of, of being able like, to um, uh, use an iframe uh, as a texture. So the, the API is, is pretty simple. So you just find uh, your uh, this source, the uh, iframe as a, as a texture source, and you can just, um, and the company is in control about the updates, 
So you have to actually uh, invoke request frame in order for the texture to, to update. And we have a demo we can, we can mm -hmm. show you how, how it works. Actually, the content that is in control about the like, keeping in sync the texture and the and the iframe. But again, there's like security and privacy controls. And if you if you can like, render an iframe as a texture, you might have access to the pixels and, and infer and infer information from it. From yes. It, so. yes. Actually, uh, you know that uh, there is this technique about distinguishing the color of the visited links. Uh, as this is a hack, this is nothing stable. Uh, it is happening now. Uh, we just uh, oh make God. the uh, we just try, it and if you visit Google, you will see in the texture you will see um, the visited pages with another color. So, but this is just an experiment. Yeah, it's a preliminary proposal, but there's some conversation going on, and this will happen eventually. But it still, is very early stages. Oh, well, I think I passed this was done to test tool. Uh, this one is uh, rendering pipeline optimization we were talking about. Um, here you have a comparison between the, the amount of data that you need to uh, transmit and working in a, in a regular, um, displaying regular content in 60 frames per second and full HD resolution and compare with well, this, this, uh, the, this is the resolution of pipe, I think. No? I think this is the resolution yeah. of pipe. Um, once per I, and then at 90 frames per second. So the, the current technique is to set the camera and the, well, the model view and, and the reaction of matrices, and then, and then for each object, render. And then you need to re upload. Almost the same state. Well, for objects, this is the same state, uh, and then you work um, twice, doing almost the same. So one of the techniques that is already possible is working with instancing and try to create two instances of each object, one projected as if as if view uh, per one or the other eyes. Or the other eye. But multi view, uh, what is possible to do with multi view is to set, um, I think, is to set a special uniforms to um, to carry the different view matrices um, in the same core. So you you upload the the different uh, project matrices or per eye. You upload the different um, view model matrices per eye, and then you render the scene once, and the multi-view extension um, takes charge of everything else. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always to review workload. Right now, it's like really duplicated effort. You render separately the left and right eye, and this is a way to combine work, in, and the GPU does the, 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 the work for you. Mm -hmm. This is another technique, and what is happening here is that you are, when, when rendering for WebVR, you are usually doing more work than needed because of the distortion introduced by the lenses. Um, this distortion needs to be offset with another artificial distortion introduced by you, you know? So the effect of the lens on the distortion you introduce, uh, they, they nullify each other and you see the, the, the scene uh, without distortion. But when, this, when applying the distortion, you are losing pixels in the edge, and this is extra work 
you usually do. So this multi-res shading say that you should render the borders in a low, lower resolution than the center one. So you are not uh, doing a lot more of uh, work. Well, and this is a um, very new technique. Um, it's experimental and it consists on using um, a, a, a low-level API like uh, what the proposal made by, by Apple about web GPU is to take a backend already working and convert it to uh, target web, as, uh, web assembly and then use web GPU as an experiment in order to um, bypass Angle and open the air and reduce overhead. But this is something uh, which is only an experiment. Yeah. And multi view already is already implemented on servo, by the way, as a, as a first experiment. It's the only, it's the only browser that, that has implementation for it. And the most uh, similar thing we'll find right now is instant, uh, multi instances. Uh, which is already available in three, I think they already did it. Uh, and that is the same, um, it is based on the same principles, but uh, they work a little bit different. And well, this yeah. is yours. Yeah, it's an AR, so if it's still early stages, but uh, both Mozilla and Google are starting to experiment on the AR front. Um, so, web VR, the web VR API is focusing on the VR use cases, uh, and we want to get it done, and then move quickly into AR uh, scenarios. And for that, there's some experimentation that is happening outside of the spec, and uh, both uh, Google and Mozilla, we have proposals with uh, AR extensions for the web VR spec, and you can actually try them today. So, for example, Google has shipped uh, two applications uh, to they have basically two web views with those extra APIs, and uh, Google has like, an implementation over AR Core, which is the AR API for uh, for Android, and for AR Kit, which is the AR API for iOS. And uh, if you install those apps, those web views, you can actually uh, play with with the API that they are uh, proposing. And in our case, in Mozilla's case, we also we are working on a WebXR uh, on iOS application that will have our own uh, WebXR spec proposal so people can play with, with the API soon. Um, it's very, very early stages and this is happening in parallel to, to, the, to the spec conversations at this point. Uh, so we can make progress on, on the VR use case and, and then focus on VR. Yep, um, that's all. Um, I want to say that you can find us on Twitter. Fernando could not uh, come as a pity because he would probably talk more about pipeline optimization. Yeah. Uh, but he's available by email. Yeah. He knows everything about multi view, he's yeah. implementing, has been the servo implementation. Well, the extension, yes, and those kind of things. So if you are interested, uh, we can cross you an email with him. And that's all. So, if I understood correctly, one of the reasons uh, why VR is not available on Mac and Linux and uh, support on different browsers, uh, various, uh, with uh, different hardware, is that you basically have to use the vendor's SDK, right, to, to get all the data and, and talk to the uh, yeah, yes. yes, yes. So, but, oh, sorry, continue. So, have you guys been trying to tackle this problem? Yeah, so there's, there's already, obviously, in order for WebVR to exist, we need hardware available on those operating systems. Um, and uh, so Firefox is going to be shipping Linux and Mac support. So at the last WWDC, Apple, Apple announced uh, uh, OpenVR support for the Mac, which OpenVR is the Valve platform for, for VR. Okay. So yeah, we already have these pieces for interconnection are already there. Yeah. So for Mac, there's already HTC Vive support, and and Firefox is going to be shipping uh, WebVR on it. Mm -hmm. Like for example, Oculus Rift, they have their own runtime and drivers, and it's Windows only at the moment. But as soon as they provide like Mac support, we will support that headset as well. Mm -hmm. And but ultimately, right now it's like a one-off thing. So when there's a new headset with a new runtime and new SDK, 
we have to take that SDK and integrate it <coughs> manually. But I know if you know, there's a Kronos uh, initiative called OpenXR, which is trying to create like a hardware agnostic uh, API. So all the runtimes, they, they will expose functionality on OpenXR. So browsers, is, that's very important for us, the browsers, we will have to tackle just one API yeah. to, in order to integrate all the devices afterwards. And, and this is coming along pretty quickly. So we hope like next year we'll have uh, like the different vendors like implementing uh, this common API instead of their own uh, custom one. Yeah, currently the, one of the main problems of the implementation is that since these headsets operate on a higher rate, you cannot depend on the uh, traditional mechanism that the uh, DOM is offering you. So you need a new pipeline in your browser, a new rendering pipeline in your browser. That, that's the main obstacle. The other is being tackled by other players and they seem to be collaborative. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, soon as when, once we have OpenXR, as soon as hardware becomes available, it will just work in the browser. All those things. So this question of one point one versus two window is fairly confusing. I tried to understand it before and, and, and failed. Is it? Do you think everyone's going to ship one point one and then at some future point delete it again? Or uh, yeah. So it's it's, it's like a trade off that we decided to make. Uh, some of the browser vendors, like Google, is not shipping one point one, but Microsoft Edge and and, and Firefox is shipping it. Because we said we don't want um, to be in the same position as happened with smartphone space. We just want to be from early on on the VR space. Like we want like uh, the web to be a first class uh, city saying in the in the VR space. And we said it, two point is going to take a little bit, a little while to, to get it done. And we just want to make web VR available for people, so people can. Uh, developers can create content and people can consume that content without having to install 90 versions, uh, flip flags, and, and these kind of things. So we want to just like to to the, to the we want the ecosystem to evolve uh, soon, uh, even though we are going to have to eventually maintain two versions of the API. Yeah, but all of it. if you see the design of the API, it yeah. is pretty possible to support yeah. or to implement yeah. a polyfill for WebVR 1.1 yeah. for legacy code on top of yeah. in the uh, of, of WebVR 2.0. Yeah, the essential is not, is, is kind of, is deliberate. So we, we believe mm -hmm. that the implementation, uh, we will be supporting two APIs, but the, the implementation is going to be mostly common to both. So it's going to be easy to maintain two versions. It's like a trade-off. It's gonna. It's a little of cost and overhead, but yeah. And actually, if you, if you read the the second in the the two point zero uh, specification, you will see that what happened is that some internal details are exposed in the two point zero yeah. version. So you do almost the same work, but exposing more parts of the of the browser uh, internal stuff. Yeah. Yeah, the way it developed was like at the, at the beginning it was only Mozilla, like Google joined, and we made like quick progress on the API, and we were happy with it. And then Microsoft and Apple and Samsung and all the people joined with a lot of requirements that are legitimate. But we said, oh, so if we just try like to to accommodate all those requirements right now, it's gonna take forever. So the API that we have right now works, it's functional and let's ship this thing and then we can take our time to make 2.0 and make the API we want. That's, that's, that's the rationale behind it. This is why it's a bit confusing, but yeah, we have two specs. And yes, it's, a, it's a bit confusing because we use the word deprecated too soon. It's yeah. not that confusing. Yeah, we are trying like, to uh, uh, soften the language a little bit in the spec to not say deprecated is like, uh, no longer under development or something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, that's, that's the reason why. We are in this situation right now. Uh, it's a good thing that happened happen because where we are, like, there was a lot of interest and everybody jumped in, and, but at the same time, it's like, oh, there's more. Uh, yeah, and you start to detect yeah. their edge corners, but you start to detect them when you have been experimenting with the uh, current yeah. specification. For instance, we were talking about one, one, one of the steps, you, or extra steps you need to take in the uh, 2.0 specification is to be sure you can present 
before sending frames. Uh, is is after 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 checking if you can support um, a session, after creating the layer, after binding it to the to the to the VR display, after everything, just before presenting, you need to do a, an extra uh, check, and that extra check is to ensure this um, ensure you can present in this situation in a multi GPU scenario. Why? Because Mac is now shipping these extra GPUs, you know, these external GPUs, and now when when they start to ship or when they start to commercialize, and this will be uh, useful, then you will have this problem. Uh, and, and this is not this is not a great change. This is uh, something you did already in Germany, but now uh, you offer the opportunity to the content to be in control of what happened if, um, if for instance, the VR, the VR device is not in the same uh, GPU yeah. if you are trying to fed with the graphical data. Yeah, exactly. So more use cases, for example, on the Apple, they, at WWDC, they announced like multi-GPU GPU, multi -GPU, like setups, and, and yeah, so he was explaining it's like a way to handle these, these cases in the API. Um, but the first API was not aware, and the problem is that, for instance, you upload gigabytes of data to the incorrect GPU, and then you try to, to present, and it crashes. But now, now we are aware, and now we can um, fix it in the second specification. Yeah. More questions? <coughs> <Nobody>. No? <laughs> Thank you.